Hello everybody. I'm my own uh, camera girl today, so. Father God, we come before you. We thank you, oh God, for everything that you're doing. We thank you, God, for everything that you're about to do. God, and we give you glory and honor on tonight. God, I just bless you. I pray for every individual that's on this call, every person that's listening. I pray, God, that there's something that I tell them, something that I give them that will be able to change their hearts and their minds about you, oh God. God, I speak over their lives. I speak over their situation. I speak over their hurt. I speak over their pain. That, God, you would just show them your glory. God, that as I say something on tonight, that it would be life-changing to them like never before. As I say something on tonight, God, that it would shake up some things in their lives, God, to remind them of who they are, whose they are, and who they belong to. Father, I bless you, I honor you, and I adore you on tonight. I dare you to heart it up. Let me know that you're there. I'm still learning this. Uh, I'm still learning how to do um, all the setup and stuff that, and Bishop is not here to help me. So uh, I'm going to try to do this the best way I know how. And let me see if I can see you guys' hearts. Hold on. Ah. Okay, hold on. I got a background. Okay. All right. Let me try one more thing. There we go. All right. Can you heart it up and let me know that you're here, that you're ready? Uh, I dare you to type all over the screen. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Type it all over the screen. So glad to see you tonight. Uh, tonight is uh, overcoming what I call my motivational Monday. Uh, so I dare you to just heart it up. Let me know you're there and say, Lady Harden, I'm ready to hear. I'm ready to see. For those that don't know me, my name is Tanya Harden, a.k.a. Let me turn this down. AKA the game changer. I see your hearts. Thank you. The game changer. My goal is to get you from your pain to your purpose and from your purpose to your promise. And the way I'm going to do that is by getting you to say yes to your next. What is my next? I have no idea what my next is. But one thing about it is that I'm believing that there is more for me. I'm believing that God has so much set up for me. All of you that have joined the newcomers, thank you so much uh, for coming in. I pray that even as people that are replaying this, uh, that there is something that you would get out of these uh, um, freebies that I'm giving um, to give to you just to kind of encourage, to empower, uh, really not church, nothing like that. It's just some things that I want to deal with, especially when it comes to dealing with your pain. So that's some things that I want. I want to be able to push you and I want to be able to remind you of the greatness that's on the inside of you, that you can be a game changer by changing the game about your pain. Can you heart it up if you feel me on that? I am also the author of There's Power in Your Pain When You Learn to Speak Life Into It. There's Power in Your Pain When You Learn to Speak Life Into It. My first book, super excited about it. You can also go on my website uh, at www.ndfcworldchangers.com to purchase this book. You can also go on our eChurch, uh, NDFC eChurch, to purchase this book as well. I am the proud co-pastor of the greatest church on this side of heaven, uh, New Destiny Fellowship Church, under the leadership of the cutest pastor ever, uh, my bishop, uh, Bishop Clyde Harton Jr. Uh, so I'm excited about what God is doing. But tonight, there are some things that I do want to talk to you about. This is more uh, for me. Uh, this is something that I believe that we all deal with. But uh, for some reason, we allow what we call shame to happen. Um, have If you've ever dealt with depression, uh, again, this is a game changers page. So this is one of those that you're on this page. Some of you have been either connected by me. 
And I've wanted you to be here because I've seen something in you that I believe that could change your life through this. Not only that, uh, there's someone else that saw something in you that said, hey, I want to add her to this page. I believe that she could be blessed. I believe that she could be empowered. And I believe that she can be encouraged. But one thing about this page is that we try to be very real, relatable, and relevant to you to let you know that, hey, this is a page where you can be free. You can be you. Uh, but most of all, you'll be able to be poured into. Okay? So... I dare you to type all over the screen. I'm uh, not I'm ready because, you know, I don't want you to say I'm ready this time. I want you to say, let's go. Like, I'm ready to hear about depression, how to overcome depression. How what is the lesson that I need to learn in depression? So can you type on the screen the number one? If you've ever dealt with depression, I'm pretty sure that's everybody on here. That's you. That's you. That's looking That's you. That's watching you right now. That's watching the replay. You've dealt with it. We all have. But one thing about it is that people have made it to where we are shamed and embarrassed because of what we go through through or because of depression because if I say I'm depressed that mean I'm crazy I'm gonna look cray cray look cray cray and that's not the case um in this you're gonna learn that it ain't that it ain't that I'm crazy it's just what you call life that happens and I don't know how to handle it I don't know how to deal with it some of us have dealt with uh postponed depression some of us after having a baby excuse me we've dealt with that but this here is a little bit different that I'm going to talk about tonight is that you know that's that time again when life hits you my thing for those that don't know my thing is pain because I've experienced and if you see I'm rocking my shirt got pain uh I wish you could see it all got pain been through it been there done that and found my purpose this is a shirt that God had gave me it's just like the got milk right got milk but in this case, I got pain. I've been through it. I've done it. And now I'm found my purpose in it. Because one thing about pain, one thing about depression, one thing about life, period, is that it's a life lesson. And it's all about what you're going to learn in it. Are you going to stay in it? Are you going to be complacent in it? Or are you going to move forward? I dare you to heart it up. If you say, you know what? I'm tired of sitting in this. I'm tired of going through this. I'm tired of just being stuck and not being able to come out. I dare you to heart it up. And the reason why I'm saying heart it up because I really I can't see your comments. I go back and I look at the comments later. Please make sure you comment because that gives me life to let me know that this is I'm like Lisa uh, Nichols. This is not a dialogue. Like we're going back and forth. Like I'm here to talk to you. So when I have you hearted up, it just let me know that I'm not here by myself. I'm watching your hearts as you hearted up. It's a delay, but I'm getting them. But it just kind of let me know that we're here all together. And not only that, this is something that uh, most people would pay me to do. But for some reason, I'm like no I don't I just want to pour I just want to talk to you and there's a lot of things that I want to be able to give away to you uh these are things that you probably already know that's cool this page might not be for you but these may be some things but there may be another lesson that I may teach that may be for you about marriage I deal with everything from the bank account to the bedroom can you heart it up if you feel me from the bank account to the bedroom can somebody type on the screen from the bank account to the bedroom I deal with everything because I realize that sometimes we try to cover this stuff up or we try to sit it up under the rug but God is saying we got to get to a time to where we stop putting everything under a rug and not dealing with it and not facing it so many people go to AAA meetings and they deal with their issue they deal with their problems and for for some reason we in the church and and the reason why I say church because that's just who I am I'm a kingdom girl I can't help it can you put the number two on there I'm not just a church girl I'm a kingdom girl what's the difference between the church girl and a kingdom girl a church girl just say you know I really don't get convicted I do what I want to do I live how I want to live and I just show up to church on Sunday but a kingdom girl said man I do I try not to I, I, I beat my body and make it my slave I do everything I can to not fall short I do everything I can hey I'm human I mess up, I make mistakes, but I'm not satisfied in what I do. And that's the difference. And there's nothing wrong with either one. It's just wherever God has you. But with me being a kingdom girl, I can't help it. I got to talk about kingdom. Ah, can you heart it up if you feel me? I can't help it. I'm a kingdom girl. I'm a pastor's wife. I love God. And it's just not about being a pastor's wife. I have a relationship. So I have to deal with that is that within the church arena or with people that saved or people that say they know God or people, you know, you whatever you have in your relationship between you and God, whatever your prayer life is, whatever it may be. The thing is, is that sometimes we can make ourselves, we can put on this thing called a mask. Ah, uh, this thing called a mask. Can somebody type that on the screen? Mask. 
This thing called mask, a mask where we're covering up what we're going through. We're covering up the pain that we're dealing with on the inside. And we're walking around with this smile on our face. But on the inside, I'm toe up from the floor. Up. I'm messed up to the neck up. I'm just, I, I, I need somebody to help me, but I'm not screaming out loud. I'm screaming on the inside. That's what this page is for. Game changers is saying that I'm going to turn my pain around. I'm going to stop faking it until I make it. I'm going to stop faking it and shaking it. I'm going to be real about what I'm going through. I'm going to be real about what I'm experiencing. And I want somebody to help me come out of this thing. And that's my job. That's what I want to do. Help you come out of this. So let's get with it. Depression, 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 depression. One thing about depression is that you have to be able to find a blessing in, in depression. Oh, can I pause and say that again? You got to find a blessing in depression. We'll talk about it in just one second. But the thing is, is that when you have all this stuff that you got on and that, they, okay, they, okay, let me get real with y'all know I'm real. You know, I got to get real with you, right? Hard it up if you really want me to get real with you. Them times. And that's what my book is about. Yes, I'm pushing my book because I believe that it's a life changer. Let me tell you why. In this book, I tell you how I'm drowning, man. Pastor wife and all, oh, man, I was tired of going to church. I was tired of dealing with church folk. I was tired, man, I was at a place in my life where I was just like, man, if I got to go to church to deal with this, I really don't want to go. But what I found out, it wasn't about me going to church. It was about my relationship with God. Uh, come here. It was about my relationship with God and it wasn't about the people. So God had to put me at a place where he said, I'm going to rip everything from you. I'm going to take everything from you to where you're going to realize that everything you go through is for a reason and it's only for a season. Come here, somebody. It's for a reason and it's only for a season because what I'm putting you through and what I'm doing with you, I'm stretching you and I'm pulling you so that I can pull things out of you like a book. So I can pull things out of you like entrepreneurship. So I can pull things out of you like helping other women, single women, telling them that you can be celibate in this thing, that you don't have to give up. Oh, come on, somebody. Telling married women, oh, I'm about to mess these married women up. Let me go back to the singles. Telling singles that, man, you can get through this and not have to sleep with that joke. You can stand for something. I have women now that are connected with me that said for four years, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving it up. But then you got married women. Can I get real with you? Married women that got a man on the side of them and you don't even want to give it up. I tell the people this and I'm probably going to mess the whole social world up. I'm probably going to mess all of y'all up, but I'm about to say it. And you can judge me all you want, but it's your duty as a, as a married woman. It's your duty to give up the booty. <gasps> I just missed everybody up. But it is. It's your job. You married that man. You got single women that want to be married and saying, I do whatever I got to do. But then you got married women that are single that saying, man... Married women that, that have a husband that's saying, man, I'm tired of this joker. The thing is, is that what happens is life is nobody's ever happy. But the question is, who told you you was going to be happy in your singleness? Who told you that you was going to be happy in your marriage? Who told you that you was going to overcome because you, it looked like you got the, you married and you got the picket fence. Who told you that? Ooh, y'all ain't going to like me tonight. Jesus. Who told you you was going to be happy? Who told you you was going to have all that? Now, I'm not saying, and I'm not negating what you've been through. I'm not coming against what you go through. What I'm saying is that you have this thing called life that happens. No matter what. Life that ha I've been with my husband. I tell y'all all the time, like, that's my boy, my baby daddy, my yellow bone. He's all that to me. But that don't mean that we don't have our moments. And that's what I come to deal with tonight. The moments that you have. Can you heart it up? Because what happens is, is that depression will put you in that moment. Okay, what do you mean? What do you mean, Tanya? What are you talking about? Let me help you. What I mean is, is that when I went through with this cane, when I was going through, I was on, I was on this cane. I told, I tell y'all my story all the time. This is my testimony and I can't help it. But I remember being swollen in my face. And if you get my book, you will see in the back of the book where my face was about that big and things were happening in my life. Remind you, you know, I got children. I got a husband. I got all these things, but this thing called interruption. Can you type that in the screen? This thing called interrupting your life happened. 
Can I tell you it happens? That this thing called interruption that happens in your life, your interruption may be totally different than my interruption. My interruption is totally different than yours because one thing about it is that no matter what, every individual that's watching me right now, all of us got to go through our own thing to be able to help somebody else. Come here. I dare you to heart it up if you feel me right there. We got to go through so that we can be able to tell our story about what we've been through because I promise you everything you've been through, there's going to be somebody that's going to come around you that's going to be connected with you that is is going through the same thing that you went through and you've overcome it you came through it you came out of it and I come to tell you tonight that baby don't allow what you're going through to put you in a state of isolation that's my first point uh, what happens with depression you got all this stuff up under you let's say you got all this dirt up under up under you this thing called life and these things are happening and I need y'all to really, really hear me because one thing we try to joke, we joke about and all oh, people crazy and they got to take pills and do it. Hey, you know what? I, I tell you this, listen to your doctor. I'm going to be totally honest with you. Listen to your doctor, but then I can also may sound cliche, may sound churchy, but I will tell you this, that I know that there's other ways that God can move and he can turn that thing around. I'm not telling you something I heard. I'm telling you something I know for myself and I wrote about it in my book to tell you that I was in a place where I felt like I was drowning and I was in this tunnel. And I used to always tell people, I feel like that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Can you heart it up if you've ever been to a place where you felt like that there's no light at the end of this tunnel? Can you heart it up and put the number one in the screen? I've been in, man, I feel like I'm in a place now telling you where I feel like ain't no light at the end of the tunnel, man. I feel like that everything is on top of everything just eating me up right now. And I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I want to give up. I come to help you. Yes, I do. I come to help you. Can, uh, even I didn't been through stuff in my past. Uh, I didn't been through stuff uh, uh, in my past that didn't ate me up to where I, I got all this over, you know, just piling up stuff at the stuff at the stuff light bills do and I don't got the money whatever it may be and this thing has put me in a place to where I feel like I can't breathe oh I'm gonna let that sit I felt that I feel like I can't breathe I come to help you this 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 scope this Facebook live is not for everybody this is for that one, you're here right now. And I come to tell you that you're looking at a girl that was in the same place. Again, my situation totally different than what you're going through. But one thing I can tell you is that no matter what, pain, depression, it all feels the same. It all feels the same. And can I tell you this, that depression has no respect of person, that it hits you at any time. But I come to tell you that it's only a moment. Can you, can you heart it up? Type in the screen, heart it. I know you can do it all at the same time. You, you, you can move fast. Moment, moment, moment. What happens is, is this moment of me looking like I was looking and unable to walk and own this cane and, and not able to get around and not able to do my wifely duties. You know, like everything with nothing going right. Anything that needed to go right, it was not going right for me. Can I get off of that? How about... When my husband and I pastoring a church, we lost everything we had. My husband working a good job, but we had that moment where the air condition went off, went out and the air condition in our house cost $2,000. Then the air condition, it went from the air condition went off two weeks later. All of a sudden the hot water heater went off. Have you ever been there? Hot water heater costs us another grand. So now we got stuff on top of stuff and bills getting behind because we're in this thing called life. Everything around us is doing good. See, what, what happens is the enemy tricks us and he makes us think that we're the only one going through. My God, that we're the only one going through. Can I tell you that you ain't the only one that's going through? Girl, if we was in church, I'd tell you to touch your neighbor, but I dare you to heart it up. That you ain't the only one that's going through this. There are so many people that go through because we go through this thing. We're living in this thing called life and things happen in life. Things go on in life, but it's all about what you do with it. Can somebody type in the screen what you do with it? What you do with it? Because one thing about life is that you're living in a moment. It's just like if you go on Facebook. I, I told this story before. You go on Facebook and it's so crazy, you know, especially women. 
Oh my God, we had this bad comparing ourselves to other people. And I'm not knocking Facebook. Hey, you see I'm on Facebook Live. I ain't knocking Facebook, but I'm knocking what we do in the moment. I'm not just telling you something I heard again. Telling you something I know we go on Facebook and we see somebody that got a picture of a family and eight people and all this stuff. And it look like they just got it together. Can you? Uh, I didn't even put the number two in the screen. Boy, they look like they got it together. You got the husband and the wife and they just put on Facebook. Um, how, uh, This is our, what, what I got coming up. My husband and I, 17 year anniversary. We're celebrating my boy, my boo, my all that man I love him he my ride or die and what you caught in that picture was a moment but do you not know that sometimes this yellow bone this this dude beside me that you watching in this moment get on my nerves that this dude on the side of me he looking at me and I get on his nerves we probably left that picture and was just arguing about something we probably left that picture and some things went down the picture that you saw in the moment that you saw they may have been just going through and really trying to make a selfie just say I'm all right I'm good but at the end of the day that's that thing called mass baby don't live in the moment uh, don't live in the moment, man. It's only a moment that you just saw on Facebook. They still go through. They still, I had somebody tell me today, man, I thought you and bitch were perfect. Lies you tell. Ain't nobody perfect. You give me a relationship out there perfect. I, I don't know. I, I just never seen one. You let me know where it's at. Okay. Make sure you inbox me or text me or something. I don't know now. Uh, did I, I went ghetto right there. Jeez. I don't know now, not now. I don't know one. That's perfect. But I do know that you're living together and you're growing. One thing about me and Bishop in this picture, I'm still on this picture. We grow together. When we stretch and we're, we're learning stuff new every day, all the time. All the time. Learning something new. So the thing is, don't get caught up in the moment of your life. Your picture moment of, man, everything's going good. And then the next day, oh my God, I feel like I'm in the ditch. And maybe you are. But the thing is, is how are you handling it? What are you doing to not be in that moment again? Oh, y'all got me sweating. The thing is, is that when it comes to depression or when it comes to uh, what I call your sadness, when it comes to life happening, let me say that. When it comes to life happening, you must realize that you got to put in the work. That's my... That's, okay, let me go back. I, I didn't pass myself up. What happens is, the one thing you know when you get to a point of depression is that you start isolating yourself. Can you type that on the screen? Isolation. You start isolating yourself because of your life and what happened. You isolate yourself for two reasons. You isolate yourself because of humiliation. Ah, can you, can you put, type that somewhere? Humiliation. You isolate yourself because I'm humiliated because, you know, I was on top of the world. You know, you got income tax coming up. I ain't knocking nobody. Whatever. I, hey, I do what I do with my income taxes. I make it happen. But I, that's on a whole nother day that I can explain to you how, how to budget and all that. But anyway, but one of the things that, that, that you, it's like I'm on top of the world because I got money. I'm on top of the world. Because I got this. Can I tell you that there's nobody rich, poor, young, old. Everybody go through. And you might be in that moment of, I, I'm, I'm doing good. But I promise you that life going to happen. But the thing is, you got to learn the lesson. You got to learn the lesson. So when you become isolated, you feel humiliated. And not only am I humiliated, but now I want to turn myself away from everybody, man. I want to do everything I can to block out everything and everybody around me. I don't want to, I don't want to pay attention to this thing called life that's happening. Uh, can you heart it up if you feel like I'm, I'm trying to block out this thing called life that's happening. Baby, I come to tell you that life going to continue to happen. But the question is, are you going to allow it to happen with you or without you? And you want to you want it to happen with you because there's so much greater that's on the inside of you. There's so much. When I was in that place of depression, oh my God, I didn't want to be around nobody. I wanted to isolate. Can I tell you that's exactly what, kingdom girl, that's exactly what the enemy wants you. Anything I can do so that I could sit up and mess with your mind. Because what happens is, yo, that, that thing I call chatter that goes on in your mind that you ain't nothing, you can't be nothing, you ain't gonna never be nothing, you ain't gonna never overcome this, you ain't gonna never lose that weight, you ain't gonna never get that business, you ain't gonna never come out of this, you gonna forever be living with Nene and Ray Ray and all them. Baby, I come to tell you that's a lie you got to put in the work that's my second point second point you got to put in the work if this is happening to you right now you got to put in the work man 
What is the work? You got to get up. You got to make a decision that today I'm living for today. I'm not waiting on tomorrow. I'm going to do what I have to do today. I'm going to write down my plans. The Bible says to write the vision down and make it plain. How long I got? I don't want to. Okay. Write the vision down. I only got a couple of minutes. Write the vision down. Make it plain. I got to write my vision down. How about this? I cannot live in my past. We're going into 2018. You know, I'm probably, probably sure you hear everybody saying this on Facebook. I'm sorry. I'm going to be there to everybody too. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to carry what you're going through right now into 2018. Don't start your year out like that. Allow your past to be just that. Your past. Allow what's happening right now. Because guess what? Two minutes from now, that's going to be your past. Three minutes from now, that's going to be your past. But your thing is, is that you got to be able to put in the work. You got to be able to say, I got to figure out. I had to find out for me. I had to find out. How am I going to put in the work, man? How am I going to put in the work? I had to start writing stuff down and finding my way to get up out of my depression. So I kept moving. That's my third point. That's one. Yeah. Keep it moving. You cannot stop. How do I put in the work? I don't stop doing what I'm doing. If that's working on my job, if that's, you know, doing hair, if that's no matter what, you should always constantly move. I heard a man say he was walking at the hospital and he walks every day and he's like 70 years old, y'all. And he walks every day. And my husband asked, this, asked him this question, man, why you walk every day? He said, because if I stop walking, I'm going to die. If I stop moving, I'm going to die. Can I tell you if you stop moving? What did I mean die? I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about mentally. Because now you become stuck. Now you become complacent. Now you become stuck in that situation of where you are. And you never get over that. And you never move to your next. You never start living again. Even though I was on a cane. Even though, man, man, the people in my church. And if y'all on here, I need you to validate this. I need you to heart it up. I didn't miss church. I kept going. I didn't miss work. I kept going. Why I didn't miss church and why I didn't miss work? I didn't miss work because I needed to help my husband pay bills. We had just went through a crazy time in our life. I couldn't stop work. So you mean to tell me stop working because I'm depressed? Or stop working because life happened? So you just going to stop? That's how we doing that now? You just going to stop. No, you can't stop. Again, I'm not negating what you're going through. This is happening to you. Whatever it is, it's happening. Can you hold it up on the screen? I mean, can you type in the screen? It's happening. Whatever it is, it's happening to you. It, I, I can't negate what's going on. What you're feeling is real. What you're going through is real. I'm not knocking it. But I come to tell you that you got to you gotta put in the work. You got to get up from there. I, I realized that not only did I, I couldn't stop, but I had to go to church. Why? It wasn't because of people. Because remind you, I told you that church folks kind of got on my nerves, right? But I started going to church because God had to put me in a place to where you're not coming here for these people. You're coming here for me. By the way, my next topic, uh, I can't wait to talk to you. I'll tell you in a couple of weeks. Next topic going to be uh, about church hurt. How to deal with church hurt, man. And one of the things that I dealt with was that it was like it wasn't about the people. And I'm not knocking nobody at our church. It's just when you're going through, and if you ain't never been through nothing, you'll never understand this. So don't judge us, uh, those of us that go through. You just don't feel like being around people. And especially in my case, I was uh, my face was deformed, man. I didn't want to be around nobody. I didn't want to be around my family. I didn't want to be around nobody. But all I wanted to do was go to church and go home. God, that's one, those are two things that God wouldn't let me stop, was going to work and going to church. Why going to church? When you're dealing with depression, it's very important that you get under, under a Bible-based church that's going to grow you. Let me say that one more time. You need to get under a church that's a Bible-based church that is going to grow you. You need to be connected with people that are going to speak life into you. Because your homegirl that's depressed with you, that ain't going to work. I'm going to say that one more again, one more time. That homegirl, y'all got to pray for me. Lord going to deliver me from ghetto. He going to deliver me from that one day. But your girl, your homegirl, both of y'all depressed together. Two birds of a feather flock together. That's what my grandmother used to say. Two birds of a feather flock together. Y'all, y'all, that ain't going to work. You and your baby daddy or your, your boyfriend or your husband, both of y'all depressed. No, somebody needs to go to church. 
Somebody needs to get some word. But and it ain't about just getting word here on on Facebook Live or you know on the TV. That's great. But the Bible says for na forsake not that coming together. That means you need to get with like minded people, people that are gonna push you forward. It's very important. So I had to. God made it to where I had to go because everything that was happening in those months that I was going through, a lot of it I had already planned. And so I had to be. I ain't really have to, but I went. Because the the topics and the sermons that my husband was preaching was at the time at the time I needed it. I I, I would have lost my mind if I didn't have the word that he was giving on them days. I would have lost it. So it's very important that number one, you don't isolate yourself because you become you you because of humiliation because you feel embarrassed. Don't allow the enemy to trick you that way. Number two, put in the work, man. You gotta put in the work. Number three, you got to keep moving. Don't ever stop moving and do not allow your past to go into your future, man. Leave your past where it's at. You don't never forget where you come from. I never forget. That's why you will forever hear my story about my testimony, about losing everything. I had never lost. I ain't never had a repo in my life. And y'all know. Okay. Ugh. I ain't never been through that in my life. And all of a sudden we pastoring and now that man, come on. Like that was like, what God, what is happening? And some of the stuff happened in front of my family. Humiliation. So do I stop because I'm humiliated and I'm isolating myself because of what I'm going through? Or do I keep pushing? Yes, you keep pushing. You don't stop. Realize that what's happening in your life right now is only a moment. There's a season. The Bible says there's a season for everything. <sighs> Excuse me. There's a season for everything. You have a season for everything that you go through. There's a time and place for everything. So that means that and, and it even says for preachers that you preach in season and out of season. So that means that life going to happen no matter what. You just got to find your season and get in the wave of it and find out, God, what is the lesson that I need to learn? Let me tell you my lesson and I'm done. The lesson that you learn in this is that everything you go through validates you for your next. Everything that you experience prepares you. I, I'm validated because of this. This I'm validated not because of the book. I'm talking about the cane on the book. Because of what I went through. Same cane I used. I'm validated because I done been through girls that didn't that didn't, women that didn't dog me out, that didn't talk about me. I'm validated to talk to you about betrayal of family members or betrayal of a loved one because I didn't have family members that have betrayed me. I can talk to you about, because I've been through it. You mean to tell me if I didn't go through that? Well, how can I tell you how to have a baby if I ain't never had one? How can I tell you how to get out of this if I ain't never been through it? So how can you help somebody else if you don't go through it? How can I help you if, if, if now... I can't help nobody when it comes to, you know, I haven't been in that situation when it comes to cheating, but I know other people that have been through it and I've been able to help them cope with it and their relationships are better and they're standing in the midst with their husband and they way better than they've ever been before. I can tell you that, but I can tell you because I, I, I can't tell you how she felt in that moment, but I can tell you how it feels for somebody to mistreat you. I can tell you that. I've been through it. I can tell you how it is to be cheated on by a boyfriend because I had a boyfriend that did that. Not Bishop. Let's make sure. Let's get that straight. It wasn't Bishop Clyde Horton Jr. But, I, you know, I, who's to know? I'll probably still be with him if he did. I don't know. But I, I couldn't tell you that. But because of what I've been through, I can tell you that because of what you go through, you're able to tell somebody else, don't allow your depression to put you in a sinking situation to where you don't come up out of it. It's time. You've been going through this for too long. I'm talking to somebody and I felt that in the Holy Ghost. You've been going through this for too long. You've been dealing with this for too long. You've laid in it. You wallowed in it. You just been through. I tell the women at my church, don't allow you. You have one day. To sit up and have your pity party because you're human. You have one day to sit there and say, man, why me? You have one day. I had those moments. Lord, why me? Why you? The doctor's telling me I had cancer. I went thinking I had cancer for five months. Think I had cancer. I'm like, Lord, why me? Yes, I was in my pity party. I had my moment because I felt like that shouldn't have touched me. But at the end of the day, thank God I don't have cancer. Praise you, Lord. But God was like, you mean to tell me that I put my son through? 
And I can't put, oh, I'm sorry, I done went to church. Yes. You mean to tell me that I, the one that I put on the cross for your sins, I allowed them to whip him in his back? I allowed them to beat him like never before? And you mean to tell me that I can't put you through nothing? Come on here, man. You have to go through if you want to have a testimony. You got to go through if you want to get stronger. You have to go through if you want to grow. You got to grow so that you can glow and go to the next level. What do I mean? You got to go through something. It's not that I'm going. Let me say this. Let, let me fix that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Call. Uh, what's her name? Call our cannon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not that you're going through, but you're going to. So let's stop saying I'm going through. Can somebody put that on the screen? I'm not going through. I'm going to somewhere. This what that this is happening to me right now. And I'm done, y'all. I'm going to let y'all go. But I just felt God up in my room in this in my office right then. It ain't that I'm going through. I'm going to something. What's happening to me right now is going to take me to something. What I'm dealing with right now, I'm going to something. This I got a destination to get to. I'm going somewhere. Can you type that on the screen if you feel me? I'm going somewhere. What do I mean I'm going somewhere? I, my, my job and everything I'm going through, I'm going to help my homegirl that's on the side of me that said, man, I'm tired of going through. I'm tired of doing this. And I can turn around and look at her and say, girl, let me tell you. I came out of that, man. I don't, I'm, I'm telling you where I'm at right now. I can tell you right now. I've been that girl that had dudes after dudes after dudes after dudes sleeping around. Come on here, somebody. Sleeping around. I tell people all the time, Bishop ain't the only one I ever slept with. You better get it. I ain't calling myself no whatever, but I, whatever. And don't act like you ain't never been there. Well, I've slept around, but guess what? What I realize is that every woman that's attached to me, everybody that I know, I can tell them, girl, you worth more than that. Don't sleep with that man and then be convicted about what you just did or you feel bad because you slept with him. You ain't want to sleep with him. Don't do it. Don't make no joke or pressure you into something you want to do. Save yourself until you get mad. I can tell you that because I've been there. So you got to go through. I can tell a woman, man, I, oh my God. I can tell a woman that when another lady hating on you and they, they coming against you and they talking about you and you know they talking about you, you know they dogging you out. And I can tell you, baby, love them in spite of what they do to you because guess what? I learned how to do it. Ah! So I come to tell you tonight. I don't even have nothing written down, y'all. I, I, I thought I did, but I forgot the points. I think it's isolation. Don't isolate yourself. Something else. Uh, don't isolate Work, put the work in, don't stop moving, and I don't know the last one. Go to, let me just say that, that's going to be our last one, we're going to go to. You got somewhere to go to, don't, don't despise small beginning, what do I mean? Don't despise what you're going through right now. That it ain't for a reason, man, you just got to find out what is this, re Lord, why am I going through this? I can tell you, man. I went through, I, I went to, I went through, and now I see myself going to because of what I went through. Does that make, I hope that makes sense. Can you heart it up if that makes sense to you? That may, we got to get to a point as women, man. We got to know who we are and know that everything we're going through is only a moment. That's it. It just depends on how long you allow this moment to be. How long you allow this moment to be. And it's up to you. How long you going to allow it? Pick up your bed. Come on. There's a scripture in the Bible that, that, that this man was on his bed and he was sitting there and he, and he had sores all over him. I preached about this. I forgot the title. But he had sores all over him and he was laying in his bed. And Jesus told him, man, pick up your bed and walk, man. That means the reason why he had to take his bed with him because I don't want you to forget where you... That ain't, I ain't trying to show my book. I don't want you to forget where I brought you from. So keep your bed with you. Keep all your scars. Keep all your hurt. Yeah, but don't take it with you into the next year, man. Don't allow. It's like me picking up a chair in this room and trying to carry it out of a small door. Where you're going. Oh, glory. God, I feel. Oh, where you're going, your issues ain't going to be able to fit. Where you're going, it ain't going to make it out the door. So don't try to carry it with you. Keep it in your mind. But place it, hey, whatever. But you can't carry it with you, not in this season. So I encourage you, find your lesson in your depression. Can you type that on the screen? Find your lesson in your depression. I'm done. 
I love you guys. I pray that this has encouraged you. I pray this has empowered you. I pray that you pick up your bed and walk. I pray that you realize that what you're going through is only a moment. I pray that you realize that you're better than that. You're bigger than that. You're greater than that. I pray that you realize that there's so much on the inside of you. And I'm not just saying this to be cliche because you're looking at a woman again that didn't know her worth, that didn't know who, uh, didn't know like what God had for me, didn't know that. And I'm learning daily. I ain't got that yet because guess what? There's a lot of things that still stamped on me that thing called imperfection so I'm not perfect but I'm telling you I'm trying to strive to do better and that's what I want you to do do better man don't sit there pull yourself out get up pick up your bed and walk I love you guys so much I thank you for being a part of this with me I pray again